Mm-hmm. I bet. Just a minute. It lives, I see. Do you want to speak with Lolita? I'm sorry, but Gabriel's allowed. I mean, he's out. You know, you could do better. I know I don't know you, but you could do better. Bye bye Good morning. You look like hell. Did you have another nightmare last night? Yes, because having nightmares is what I do, apparently. Seventh damn night in a row. I told you, it's that voodoo book you're researching. That stuff can seriously screw with your karma. Unfortunately, I don't think my readers would go for a horror novel about fluffy bunny rabbits. So voodoo it is. You mean your reader? She lives in Wisconsin, doesn't she? Bite me. Hey, what goes on in your bed stays in your bed as far as I'm concerned. I have messages for you when you want them. Today's newspaper is on the counter. Times dated June 18th, 1993. The Aquarius horoscope says, Potential storms ahead. Proceed with caution and do not get involved with anything new at this time. Hmm, <laughs> right. Don't mind if I do. Do what? Oh, nothing. That doesn't seem to work that way. Like I haven't tried. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? What do you know about voodoo? I didn't know much of anything about it until you started researching it for your book. Now I know that it's active in the city. There's that shop and museum. It can clearly be dangerous in the wrong hands. You should be careful investigating it. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Just what I read in the papers, same as you. Did you find any good voodoo resources for me? The best in the city are supposedly the Dixieland Drugstore and the Historical Museum of Voodoo. Both are right here in the French Quarter. How would I ever manage without you? You? Give me a break. The devil himself couldn't change you. Well, if the devil had great legs, perhaps. Like yours. And a riveting personality, I'm sure. If you need any more research done, just ask. It's not as though we're swamped with customers. What do you know about voodoo? I've told you all I know. Sorry I can't be more help. What do you know about the voodoo murders? You won't get far questioning me about it, Sherlock. What can you tell me about Narlins? I've only been here two months, but I love it. It's so much more alive than any place I've been. It feels like anything's possible here. What else can you tell me about Nolens? You're the native. Don't ask me. Do you have messages for me? Your friend Detective Mosley called. Talkative, isn't he? Especially with you. What did he want? He told me to tell you that his mother's maiden name is Humphrey, and that he left some photos for you at the station, at the front desk. It's about time. Let me guess. This has to do with the voodoo murders, right? Some kind of inside police information? Did you tell him you'd put him in your new book? Maybe. A writer has a certain obligation to his readers, you know. Gabriel! You know you'll never put him in your book. Your main character is a female orthodontist. You're going to be reincarnated as a pit bull if you keep screwing with your karma. 
As long as it's a male pit bull with a really big... Uh, that's enough. Thanks. Do you have messages for me? You got a call from someone named Wolfgang Ritter. He was calling from Germany. He told me it was urgent. Maybe you should give him a call. Call Germany? Like hell. If it's really important, he'll call back. Well, fine. Let's just hope he's not with the German lottery for pitiful American authors. Do you have messages for me? Your grandmother called. I keep meaning to get over there. What did she say? Did she sound good? She sounded great. We had a nice little chat about you. Grace? Don't worry. I didn't go into detail about your cardinal sins. Not that anything about you could surprise her. She adores you anyway. She's my girl. And she sent over that box on the table for you. Do you have messages for me? Dana called and Susie left a message about a lawsuit. Tossum. Okie dokie. Well, that's all the messages for now. Tell me about yourself, Grace. What do you want to know? How come we haven't gone out yet? I'm still waiting around for that lobotomy. Soon as I get it, I'll let you know, okay? How do you like working at St. George's Books? Well, it's not exactly a huge intellectual challenge. Although the math in your record books could confuse Einstein. Still, I love old books. And it's a nice way to pay the bills while I explore the city for a summer. If you ever pay me, that is. What do you do after work? I either go to my oil painting class or my Tai Chi. You know that. You can go overboard with this improving yourself stuff. You don't want to alienate us mere mortals. Oh, I suppose I should just allow my mind and body to atrophy. Works for me. How old are you? Old enough to know about men like you. Just tell me anything at all. I just got my master's in history and classics. My folks wanted me to go on right away for my PhD, but 18 years of school was enough. I needed a break. Just tell me... I came to New Orleans because I'd read so much about it. I thought spending a few months here would clear my head. Just tell me... I've been studying Tai Chi for 10 years. It's a very spiritual discipline. I'm sure discipline of any sort isn't something that would appeal to you, Gabriel. Nothing, I guess. Never mind. So, what's new, Grace? Your use of mathematics, for one thing. These books are unbelievable. What can I say? I refuse to be bound by rules. The strap marks on your bedpost speak otherwise. Done anything interesting lately? By your definition? No. I prefer it that way. Keep him busy? Not really. If you need any research done, let me know. Seen any good movies? I saw a great documentary last night on pyramid excavations. You mean small, dark places that haven't been touched in centuries? Sounds right up your alley. Well, it did help me gain a better understanding of your mind. Did I ever tell you that you're actually quite attractive? Be still, my heart. Had any customers lately? No, but I'm sure you have. You know, you really should get out more. But then who'd take care of St. George's? Me. Exactly. Three snakes in a skull. Gabriel's father painted it. What a wacky offbeat kind of guy daddy was. Nope. No safe full of money back there. Grace keeps her art supplies here. Gabriel wouldn't dare touch Grace's oil paints. Cute gargoyle, eh? Life is too short to talk to ugly statues. You never know it by the women you date. The gargoyle has no function but sheer ugliness. 
Not unlike... Oh, never mind. The box has Gabriel's name on it, written in his grandmother's handwriting. Gabriel's father's old sketchbook sits on the top. Images haunt the pages of Philip Knight's sketchbook, the way they must have haunted his mind. The images touch a deep chord in Gabriel. So familiar are they that he finds it hard to believe they aren't from his own subconscious. Gabriel plans to turn the balcony into a schmaltzy cafe if he ever gets the cash. The balcony floor needs work and is unsafe. The welcome mat is well worn. Unfortunately, that's only because Gabriel picked it up second hand, not because of the stampede of customers. There could be a secret passage under the doormat, but we didn't have time. It's a book about the world of snakes. Hey, that's interesting. Snakes can sense their prey by vibration. Hmm. Did you know that medieval legends about dragons and giant worms are actually based on snakes? You know, dragons, devils, sea monsters. They've always been associated with snakes. Grace, get alive. A book of German poetry that once belonged to Gabriel's grandfather. Gabriel has always found it strangely compelling. Dry drachen creaken in meinen schlaf, die Seele wollen sie lebendig zum Fraus. Feuerigen Atems, gespaltener Zunge, genießen sie jedes Mal. That's nice. Kinda creepy though. Who's the author? Heinz Ritter. I'm not sure what it says, but I get the feeling this guy was one sick puppy. Gabriel leaves through a German-English dictionary. Drachen means dragons. I wonder if Mosley would know he was being insulted if I called him Drachen Breath. Gabriel leaves through a German... Dra means three. Gabriel leaves through a German Dra means three. Gabriel leaves through a Mittag means midday, noon. Gabriel leaves through a Spiel means game. Interesting. Gabriel leaves through a Himmel means heaven. Huh. Gabriel leaves through a Mittag means midday. Gabriel leaves through a Spiel means game. Gabriel leaves through a Dra means three. Gabriel leaves through a German ink. Spiel means. The ladder provides access to the uppermost shelves of the bookcase. If you try to look down my shirt one more time, I'm leaving. Just trying to refresh my memory. I know what you're trying to refresh, and it isn't your memory. Get down. Those keychains were for a promo I tried once before I realized it was hopeless. Gracie's resume. She was way overqualified. A and also the only person who applied. I practically own stock in these guys. 
with my spare motorcycle gloves. Someone left those here after Mardi Gras. Someone left those here after Mardi Gras. Local interest piece on the store. It didn't garner the sympathy sales I was hoping for. Mind if I borrow the magnifying glass? No, Sherlock. Just bring it back when we get the next estate shipment. The Blake Backlash series. My literary claim to fame, such as it is. Not so lucky for the rabbit, was it? Hmm, fun times. I don't use hairspray. Nope, not me. Just a few self-help books. That one on top was a joke gift from Mosley. You can't take two steps down Bourbon Street without ending up with a strand of beads. I forget where that came from, but seems like a nice place to visit. That's from Graham. She likes to think it means someone's watching over me. I'm not so sure about that, but I don't have the heart to get rid of it. I always had a thing for St. George. The one who slew a dragon? Yeah, it's probably bigger than this little guy, though. I'm going to take the tweezers for a bit. Good. You're beginning to look a bit scruffy. Gabra looks at the cash register, checking for cobwebs. Gabriel opens the cash register to examine the take. Or in the case of St. George's books, the mistake. It's a $20 gift certificate left over from yet another dismal failure of a promotion. I trust you can live without this old gift certificate. Knock yourself out. The cash register contains about $20 in small bills and change. Gabriel, that's all the change I have. Touch it and you can kiss your hand goodbye. Would I do that to you? My bathroom. I've got to get around to cleaning up in there. A little cold bubbly and brie cheese is about all Gabriel's fridge ever has in it. Gabriel, shut that refrigerator, please. Oh, I can smell it from here. Whimmer. I don't need to, thanks. The medicine cabinet contains a few old prescription, personal hygiene stuff, and lots of hair products. I'll take this hair gel. You never know when you need a touch-up. The closet is loaded with white t-shirts. There's one black button-down for those fancy occasions. Hmm, I might be able to use this black shirt. An abundance of white t-shirts. All my clothes look the same, so why change them? There's a flashlight on the dresser. The building's wiring leaves a lot to be desired.
I might need a flashlight. A poster on the wall advertises Mardi Gras, the biggest party of the year in New Orleans. The dresser holds a meager supply of underwear and 38 pairs of mismatched socks. Let sleeping lions lie. I got that cheap at a garage sale. Always had a thing for lions. It's Gabriel's bed, unmade as usual. It's no use. I can't sleep. The carpet was grand. She gave it to Gabriel to cheer the place up. The wastebasket overflows with crumpled pages of mediocre glory. If I threw those pages away, they weren't worth reading. An office chair waits for Gabriel to sit down and write something. If Gabriel sat down, he might actually have to write something. The typewriter is beginning to accumulate cobwebs. Should I feel guilty? Nah. Can't. Writer's block. The typewriter is too heavy to lug around. Gabriel likes subdued lighting in his studio. Several dozen books, including a few of Gabriel's novels, occupy the shelves above his desk. Gabriel doesn't feel like reading right now. Gabriel's mini stereo isn't exactly high fidelity. Then again, neither is he. You're listening to KLEB in New Orleans, where we play the best music 24 hours a day. Do you have men problems? Someone put a hex on you? Call Sister Cross. Through the power of love and the Lord Jesus Christ, she can fix what's ailing you. The Creole Grand Dams will hold their annual Gardenia Festival and tea this coming Tuesday at the Sons of Burgundy Hall. Admission is free. I want you to take hold of your prayer clothes. Better yet, take hold of your radio and let's do a miracle. But first, I want to talk about doing what's right. Those of you who are out there listening to these radio waves of comfort, you know what I'm talking about. Every day, this program reaches out into the darkness and pulls lost souls from the grasp of the devil himself. Oh, but now I don't have to tell you that the Lord's work does not come cheap, my friends. So I want you to get up right now. Take out an envelope, fill it with whatever you can, and send it today. We both know that's doing what's right. I ask you, my friends, have you done your share today? Or are you being carried by those dedicated souls who support this ministry with their generous gifts and offerings? Remember, my friends, faith that costs nothing does nothing. Simply send your gifts of faith to Reverend Bob and your name will be blessed. Hallelujah. That's it for this week, friends. Enjoy the wonderful, wonderful music and may God watch over you. At Giant Discount Bookstore, we discount every title 50%. When you see our selection and prices, you'll never want to shop with those little guys again. You're listening to KLEB in New Orleans, where we play the best music 24 hours a day. The Creole Grand Dance. I'll just leave it on. Blessed caffeine. Mm, good coffee. The 
the chandelier is original. Gabriel finds it charming. All right, all right. He can't afford to replace it. Grace's coat is a simple but classic trench coat. Gabriel hates people with good taste. Leave my coat alone, Gabriel. Dramatic, isn't it? Gabriel didn't eat for three weeks after splurging on that coat. He has a thing for black leather. The windows of St. George's Books overlook Bourbon Street. See you later. See ya. That's Mosley's office. The police station is in a classic French Quarter building. Those motorcycles belong to the precinct. They're not nearly as cool as Gabriel's bike. Gabriel has his own bike. Interesting design for a trash can. Must have been on sale at Cops R Us. It's not going to look any better somewhere else. A uniformed officer of the NOPD. Uh, officer, can I ask you some questions? Desk sergeant's right over there. The desk sergeant looks like a poster boy for heart disease. 30 extra pounds between his armpits and his belt, and a complexion the consistency of gray oatmeal. In other words, a typical product of good southern cooking. Got a second, officer? What can I do you for? What do you know about voodoo? Me? Nothing. I'm a Catholic boy. What can you tell me about the voodoo murders? I'm not allowed to give out information on police cases. What can you tell me about the voodoo murders? Hey buddy, do I look like the kind of lowlife that'd betray my sacred oath to this department? I don't know. What would that kind of lowlife look like? Like hamburger meat if I got a hold of them. Kinda like what you're gonna look like in about five seconds. Okay, okay. Sorry I asked. What can you tell me about Nolens? I'll tell ya, I'm glad as hell it's not Mardi Gras. If it weren't for that one month a year, being a cop in Nolens would be a real pleasure. As it is, I'd rather stick behind this desk. What can you tell me about Nolens? Best food in the world. You can get it right here in Nolens. Mufaletta sandwiches. Mmm, mmm. Beignets, good Cajun coffee. Yep, a man can die happy in this city. It's practically guaranteed. I was supposed to pick up some photos from Detective Mosley at the front desk. Is that right? And who are you? My name is Knight. Gabriel Knight. Yeah, I got something for you, all right. Soon as you're done talking, I'll give it to you. I'm here to see Detective Mosley. He's out at a crime scene. Sorry. I'm here to see Detective Mosley. I told you, he's not here. Where's the crime scene? Is it related to the voodoo murders? Crime scene information is police confidential. 
We don't need any more looky-loos than are probably already there. Come on, you can tell me where the crime scene is. Look, I know the papers got everybody stirred up about these killings, but that don't make it public information. Back off. So this is a new voodoo murder then? Hey, I didn't say that. You'll read all about it in the papers tomorrow. <laughs> I'm sure. Please tell me where the crime scene is. Look, buddy, you keep it up, and there'll be a crime scene right here. Tell me about yourself. Who, me? I'm the desk sergeant, Frick. Why? Frick? That's right. You got a problem with that? Not at all. Tell me about yourself. You see that front door? Yeah. Well, I watch people come in. See this book? Yeah. Well, I write people's names in it, see? People that bother me. Want me to put your name in this book? Oh, I think not. That's what I thought. Tell me about yourself. I hate people who ask stupid questions. Hey, nice precinct. Think so, huh? <laughs> That's peachy. That means more to me than you could know. Kinda quiet in here today. Summer's like that. Too muggy to mug, too hot to heft. How clever. It's a gift. So, what's new around the old police station? Well, we're now allowed to shoot chatty pedestrians on sight. That sounds convenient. I like it. Excuse me, Officer Frick? Whatever it is, no. Now get out of here before I have you arrested for disturbing the peace. So, anything interesting happening around here? Look, I've got a job to do. Chat with someone else, huh? Here's that envelope for you, Gabriel Knight. Thanks. She's not bad. Gabriel can't do that from the front lobby. There's a photocopy machine in the office area. That jazz band is pretty good. Of course, most jazz bands in New Orleans are. A police officer is either off duty or patrolling the park, or both. You white face geek, you wanna eat my fist? Good day, officer. Yeah, you too. Keep moving. The band isn't paying any attention to Gabriel. A lone drummer beats out a haunting rhythm on a large African drum. Hey there, nice beat. I dig it. The drummer does not respond. A bronze statue of Andrew Jackson marks the center of Jackson Square. You white Square. face geek! You wanna eat my fist? Hey bro, nice horse. It's one of those mimes. Oh boy. Since Gabriel can't read lips, he's disinclined to start a conversation.
You white face geek, you wanna eat my fist? Okay, John Band. Inventive as always with their instruments, is having a good old time on the lawn. Funny how catchy that toe tapping can be. Hey, cut that out. I told you to stop that. All right, mister, you want some of this? Why, you little... Gabriel picks up the headset and listens. Hey, you, get away from that bike. Sorry. There's a police band radio on that bike. Hey, mostly. Huh? Mate, you wiener, I told you not to call me that. Feeling jumpy? Who, me? Don't be stupid. How'd you find me? Oh, I was just driving by. Uh-huh. Well, I guess I can let you see it. For the book. But don't tell anyone, huh? Definitely another voodoo murder. Same M.O. and no freaking clues. We're still waiting on an I.D. for the body. Oh, that's disgusting. Isn't this a rather public area for this kind of thing? Yeah, they're freaking ghosts, these guys. Lakeshore Drive isn't exactly the 10 Expressway, but it is open to the public. No reports or nothing. Now, who the hell is that? <laughs> Good day, Miss Getty. What's going on, officer? Detective Mosley, ma'am. Uh, we got a little problem here, but nothing for you to be concerned about. I see. Thank you, Detective. And good day, gentlemen. I'm in love. Forget it. That's Molly at Getty. She's about as far out of your reach as the moon. Probably on her way to meet some guy with a yacht right now. Near here? The lake's a popular place for country clubs. If she's out here a lot, maybe she saw something or heard something. Nah, nobody ever sees or hears nothing. I told you, besides, you just don't go around bothering people like her. We've about wrapped it up, sir. Well, let's get the meat wagon moving then. Stick around and take notes for the book if you want. Watch out for the muck and the water moccasins, though. If you want to talk, I'll be at the station tomorrow. Thanks. Lakeshore Drive runs around the entire lake. This is a particularly lonely stretch, but it's still a public road.
There's a pattern to the lines in the sand, but only one small area is clearly defined. Try to copy this down. Oh, that's a lot of blood. No, oh, I've got no way to take that with me, and I don't want to. The partial pattern from the crime scene intrigues Gabriel. What does it mean? Looks like there was something here. I should take a closer look. Something small and iridescent is barely visible in the sand. The marks are actually deep indentations in a regular mesh pattern. It looks like a scale of some sort. Gabriel carefully uses the tweezers to take the small, iridescent scale. I think it's a snake scale, but it beats the hell out of me what kind. The banks of Lake Pontchartrain are rich with clay deposits. I'll take some of this clay with me. Lake Pancha Train is impressive. It measures 24 miles across and stretches as far as the eye can see. Lake Pancha Train is scenic, but you really wouldn't want to swim in it. Gabriel is on the sand and clay shores of Lake Pontchartrain, at a site where some poor bastard got to see who the voodoo murderers really are. Gabriel opens the manila envelope and finds Two photographs. The photograph of Mosley was apparently taken upon his graduation from the police academy. He had hair then. One of the photos from Mosley is an official voodoo murders crime scene shot, a graphic close-up of a victim.
Lake Shore. Hello, beautiful. It's me. The excitement of seeing you is killing me. 